everybody, Alex from SeemsGoodMagic.com here, and we are doing another Theros Flashback Phantom Swiss Draft League. Underworld Cerebus, or Cerberus, excuse me, is the card open. 5 mana, 6, 6, can't be blocked except by 3 or more creatures, because it's got 3 heads, of course. And then cards and graveyards can't be the targets of spells or abilities, and when it dies, exile it, and each player returns all creature cards from his or her graveyard to his or her hand. Actually can be a downside, but it's also a 5-mana 6-6 six, six that can't be blocked except by three or more creatures, which is nuts. So we're going to first pick that. And other good cards in here. Destructive Revelry is great. Main deck removal. Erebus' is, Emissary is fantastic. Um, bunch of other things, but let's go with the Mythic, see if it can happen. If it doesn't, no big deal. I mean, it also can be an advantage, but can be a disadvantage, too. Okay, well, we could take the Grey Merchant. I really like Burnished Heart a lot. Um, I mean, if you want to make the Grey Merchant work, you got to pull the trigger on that Grey Merchant. I do want to take Grey Merchant and make it a deck. I mean, this, this card is very fun. A lot of fun to play. Burnished Heart's just a fantastic card. Doesn't matter what deck you're playing. Just lets you go all over the place, but I'm pretty tempted to just pull trigger, take it. Be happy about it. Get a, get as many as we can. I mean, the best card in the pack. I don't know. If I mean, if you're in the right deck, it's probably Grey Merchant. And getting it back to your hand with Underworld Cerberus, can you imagine the value? There's also a Farika's Cure and a Sip of Hemlock in here, which is kind of a bummer just because somebody's going to want to take those and move into black, but I'm going to take it. I want it. I want to do it. Ooh, Ember. <laughs> just. <laughs> just Ember Swallower, huh? This card's fantastic, too. Jeez. Yeah. This card's sweet. Alright. Well, clearly the best card here, so taking it. What? And then into a miss, huh? Well, we can take the Unicorn. Get a little ramp to five. Curse of the Swine. Yeah, I remember this card. It's only okay. It's, a, it's not bad. It, even though you're giving them creatures, it can be good. You're exiling too, which is nice. Um, but we probably just take the Unicorn. I could also take the Prescient Chimera. It might be the best card. I think the Titan's actually deceptively good too. Good blocker with a good upside. Might just take the Unicorn though. Let's us put our curve a little bit higher. Fix as well, which is nice. So here we can take the Ordeal. There's also a Blood Toll Harpy, which flies. There's a Traveler's Amulet as well. I'd probably take the Ordeal, though. Ordeals are quite good. Doesn't help as much as you'd like with Devotion, because it ends up, you know, disappearing when you sack it. They're good. They're good auras. Well, War Caller is cool. I actually think this card's probably pretty good. If you, because Felhide Mantar certainly aren't hard to get. And then we also have Cutthroat Maneuver too. I might just take the War Caller. It's early enough we could pick up some Minotaurs and make it come together. Why not? Well, there we go. First Minotaur. Pretty underwhelming one, I have to admit. But otherwise, we take a Dragon Mantle, which is actually pretty good. And there's a Divine Verdict in here, which is surprising, but we'll take the Minotaur. Uh, here, I guess it's Flesh Mad Steed. 2 drop 2-2 two, two with downside, but just in case we need to lower the curve a little bit. Looks like there's quite a bit of green in here that's pretty playable. Artisan Sorrow and Nylea's Disciple are pretty nice green cards. And Observant Dalciad in white. And we got past that Divine Verdict too, so that could be a sign. But we've got some pretty good cards in black and red currently. The Ember Swallower, the Underworld Cerberus are good reasons to be black-red. And the Kragma Warcaller can definitely do some good stuff for us if we get a few more minotaurs. 
I'm actually okay with the loathsome Cato Bleep Gato Cato Bleepos. I should probably figure out that pronunciation, huh? Technically, we can still use its ability with Opaline Unicorn, too. Otherwise, it's Spark Jolt, which is more of a sideboard card, but we'll take the loathsome dude. Hey, got a sip of Hemlock back. That's not a bad sign for black. Kind of expensive removal in a primarily aggressive format. At least, it was primarily aggressive when I played it five years ago, but maybe people have forgotten that. Red White Heroic was the nut. All right, we could take another Steed, or we could take Dark Betrayal, which is definitely a good sideboard card. But I probably take the Steed. We may not end up with enough cheap things, so I'm just gonna cut right here. We'll let the green flow. I'm just taking the Steeds in case I don't end up. The problem with Steeds are when you're banking on them being blockers for you, and your opponent just uses removal on another one of your creatures. That hurts. So they're they're almost more of like an aggressive card. All right, we're just going to let those good cards go because we just do not want to be in green. Hopefully, us giving all the green cards to that person on the left will make them pass all the black and red to us. Colossus, yeah. Stone Shock Giant is pretty amazing. Just get by all your dudes. My dude's huge. I'll just attack you for eight. You can't block. How's that sound? Sounds pretty crazy to me. So we're just going to be five drop fatties dot deck, huh? All right. It's a little risky, but I guess you only live once. Ashiok? Jeez. I mean, I could splat. It's, it's actually a really, really powerful card. Uh, I'm trying to think how greedy it is splashing it. I don't even think it's greedy, honestly. This card is nuts in limited. It was actually awesome and constructed too, if I recall. I like, I guess it wasn't like a mainstay, but it, maybe it was. I can't recall. But in limited, this card is nuts. Just gonna take your cards and then just spit out your creatures and kill you with them. It's so good. <laughs> We're gonna take it. It's more interesting than Death Bellow Raider and Farika's Cure. And honestly, this is not a Death Bellow Raider deck. But I know you're thinking. But wait. How could it not be? We are not an attacking deck. We are currently play some fatties and try not to die early. But I'm I'm taking the Ash out because it's just too fun to pass up here. I mean, look at this card. Probably going to need some more fixing to make this happen. Like another Opaline Unicorn, for example. Or Otherwise, we could take the Read the Bones, but... Or another Stone Shock Giant? Jeez. These Giants are good. These are real good. I think we actually need the Unicorn now, though. Uh, and Read the Bones is a great card. It's just a little bit dangerous in this format because it's so quick. I'm going to take the Unicorn. We're going deep. We're going real deep. Unicorn ramp. So here we can take the Disciple. Otherwise, what's Rageblood Shaman do? Oh, it's a Minotaur, too? Are you kidding me? <laughs> and there's a Fanatic of Mogus, too. We're going to take the Rageblood Shaman, because we already have the other. We're, we're making Minotaur dot deck here. And there's a Skull Cleaver, too. Jeez. Minotaur dot deck with Ashiok. Makes sense. Uh, Seder Rambler. Ill-Tempered Cyclops is just legit good. Fills our curve nicely, so we'll take it. Borderland Minotaur does make sense for the deck. So otherwise, there's a Felhide Minotaur too. But Borderland is vastly superior to Felhide, so we're gonna take it. Uh, removal currently is non-existent, other than a sip of Hemlock. We might need this Rage of Perforos. Otherwise, we could take the Amulet, which does help us get some more lands and maybe fix for Ashiok a little bit easier. Ill-Tempered Cyclops, once again, very good, but I think we'll take the Rage. We need some removal. Rage, I remember being a little bit underwhelming because it's sorcery. And I know maybe you're thinking, but it scries and they can't be regenerated. But no, it actually is a little bit worse than you'd expect it to be. So we could take another Ordeal. It's not really an Ordeal deck. Ordeal, I mean, they're good in general, but they definitely tend to be more of like a hey, I played a one-drop, now I've got this crazy aura and you're going to die. That's usually how it's played. But we could take the Disciple, which is good with the Grey Merchant. 
I don't like how color intensive we're getting, but we do have the opaline unicorns. Otherwise, we could take unknown shores, which is just free for the deck. Disciples, decent value. I'm actually just going to take the ordeal because I don't think I'd play anything else from there. May probably the underworld. I guess the unknown shores rather. I I might play, but and I know this. I said this isn't an ordeal deck, but ordeal is just vastly superior to those other two picks. Here, I guess we could take Mnemonic Wall, because I'm not going to play anything else. and I suppose I could technically splash it, but that's likely, or not likely to happen. Could take the Death Bell Raider. I guess it looks a little bit better with Double Ordeal. Otherwise, it's a Guardians of Elitus. I mean, we also have two Minotaur Lords, so it does make sense. But I, it honestly, having to attack each turn is definitely a big downside. We'll take the Demolish. Uh, Scourge Mark versus Rambler. Guess we'll take the Rambler. At least it doesn't have a disadvantage like Flesh Mad Steed. Take the blue card, I guess. Someone can have a Yoke Dox. Sure. Okay, well. Our deck is cool. Deck is definitely cool. Biden of Zasa. Now, how deep on that blue splash do I want to go? That's pretty deep. Probably just taking the second Grey Merchant. Be happy enough. I think the, the Emissary is very good. Uh, but we're getting rid of the Mnemonic Wall already, I can tell you that. And, uh, yeah, we're just going to take Grey Merchant. This card wins games. Just huge to have the Life Swing and a good blocker. It's a very important card. Jeez, just all these powerful rares getting passed. This card is really good. I wish I could splash Bow of Nylia. I would. Uh, probably don't want a third steed. I guess now we'll take the good sideboard card in Dark Betrayal. What just happened? That was weird. That's the second time that's happened. Now, maybe even more than that, where it's like I'm like highlighting something, and then all of a sudden just all of my screens minimize. I wonder what that is. Take the Dark Betrayal. Another Minotaur, probably. There's a Traveler's Amulet as well, and another chance to get Read the Bones, but I'm going to take the Minotaur. We got two Minotaur Lords, it just makes sense. Moses Marauder just wins games. This card is not fair. And yes, there's another Fellhead Minotaur, but this card is vastly superior. Uh, you're like, oh man, I can't win. Oh, I just make all my guys have haste and unable to be blocked, I guess. Okay. I mean, it's Intimidate, but I'm pretty sure they got rid of Intimidate because Intimidate's so good. Temple of Triumph. Well, it's actually a free land in our deck, so I could take it, but we may want another Rage of Perforos. Actually, we probably just take the third Opaline Unicorn and go super deep on getting to our five and six drops as easily as possible. So we'll take the third Unicorn. Could actually take the scholar here. Can totally splash it too. Decent win condition, surprisingly. Alright, here we're just gonna take the free scry land. We're not exactly a quick deck anyway, so I think getting scry on a land is actually pretty nice. No green cards to splash, but otherwise I'd take like a Peak Eruption or Spark Jolt for sideboard. We're taking the Temple. It's going to make the deck. Nykthos. I don't think we have enough Devotion to really take advantage of that, but I'm going to take the Rambler as a Flesh Mad Steed upgrade because I kind of want to dump these Steeds. I'd rather have things that can block, even though they're X1s. Uh, Asphodel Wanderer. You know, as bad as that card is, now nah, we got to take the, the Minotaur. When you're going Minotaur, you go real deep Minotaur. Guess we'll take another Steed. Sandals. Centaur. Now we got the Rage back. We'll take it. 
I don't think we quite have enough five drops yet, so. Uh, all right, so. Got to figure out some cuts. But other than no, other than a couple choices there, I guess we should probably cut four cards. Uh, other than that, deck looks great to me. Doing some really cool things. Probably ultimately going to get off the ordeals. But everything else to me seems fine. A little bit clunky, but we have triple unicorn to get to our five drops a little bit easier. And I don't know, it looks pretty good actually. It's unfortunate that the gray merchants look as underwhelming as they do, but I'd still rather run the Seder Ramblers over the Flesh Mad Steeds. The fact that they tap when they die, we need them as blockers. That's the problem. We're not really an attacking deck. We're a defending deck, so I'd rather have two one tramplers than two twos that tap when something dies. Um, so we probably are going to dump the ordeals, even though they're good. I almost want to dump the raider too, but um, because it's a minotaur and I've got two lords, I'm, I'm going to keep it around. Um, so we'll probably dump ordeals and the loathsome. Uh, how do we pronounce it? Let's find out. I don't know. It almost looks like cat cato bleep, cato bleepin. I don't know, but you're gone. Your cat will bleep out of this deck. That's what I think. So we got one more cut to make. Probably the Scholar, I guess. But Scholar is actually kind of sweet. But I don't want to run a white mana. And we just don't need it. So. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this is it. This is it, all right. So we probably are not going to run a blue mana because we have three opaline unicorns and we have a lot of double red and a lot of double black. So I don't think we can afford to pollute the mana base, but we'll run the one red and then no blue and we'll go up to seven black. So what is that? Ten red, seven black. I mean, probably do 8-8, eight, eight. or 9-8, yeah, I think 9-8, and cast Ashiok off of one of our three Opaline Unicorns, I guess, is a plan. All right, is this deck great? I don't know. We have some really good finishers, but other than that, I mean, it's cool having two, we've got some strong cards in here, but... I don't know. We'll have to see. All right. Running it like this. We'll see you around one.